welcome to easy electronics in this video we are doing isro technician exam preparation so we have been doing uh, preparation videos for the isro scientist post that is for the scientist electronic post and uh, today from today onwards we'll be doing the videos for the technician post also so uh, while comparing both uh, if you see the questions of technicians are little bit easier well compared to that of the uh, scientist so uh, my opinion is that if you are preparing for the isro technician post you can answer or you can prepare maximum previous year questions because anyway the questions are very basic so if you attempt maximum questions from the previous year question papers you will get a very good score in the exam so today we will be seeing the previous year questions that has been asked in 2017 technician exam and we are going to prepare for the exam so let's see what is the first question a capacitor that can store 100 micro coulomb of charge with 10 volt across a plate has a capacitance value of what the options given are 0 0.1 microfarad sorry 0 0.01 microfarad 0 0.1 microfarad 10 microfarad and 1 microfarad so this is a very very basic question this is a very basic equation we need to know to answer this question so we know that the charge stored in between the plates of a capacitor so if this is the capacitor plates then the charge stored q equal to the capacitance into the voltage across these parallel plates so we only need this equation to answer this question we have given the q that is the charge stored is 100 micro coulombs we also we have also given the voltage that is 10 volt across the parallel plates and we need to find the c so this is a very basic question so we need to substitute the uh, the q and the v values and we can directly find the c value okay this question uh, will take maximum 2 3 seconds to answer so the value of q given is 100 that is micro coulomb so into 10 raised to minus 6 equal to uh, c into v is 10 so if you take this it is c is 10 into 10 raised to minus 6 farads that is equal to 10 micro farads is your answer so the answer for this question is option c it is given as 10.0 don't get confused with the 0, 0.0 tau it is 10 micro farad itself so the correct answer for the question is option c which is 10 micro farads this question which we are going to discuss today is this how much resistance must be connected in parallel with 360 ohm resistor to obtain an equivalent resistance of r eq equal to 120 ohm so it is regarding the parallel connection of resistors and the options given are a 180 b 460 c 1.8 and 1.8 and d 320 ohm so if you are connecting two resistors in parallel say this be your first resistor this be your second resistor these two resistors let it be r1 and r2 if it is connected in parallel connection then the equivalent resistance value r equal is given by r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 right so uh, for this question we know the value of r1 is 360 we don't know the value of r2 so let us take it as r itself now we know the value of our r equivalent right so r equivalent equal to 120 here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute these values in this equivalent resistance equation. So 120 equal to R1 is 360, R2 is R itself by 360 plus R. Now here is a 120, here there's a 360. So I can cut this off as 3. Now I can write 360 plus R equal to 3R, right? Take this R to this side. So you will get 360 equal to 3R minus R equal to 2R. Right. So 360 equal to 2R or R equal to 360 by 2 which is equal to 120 ohm is your answer for this question. So the answer for this question is option A 180. So the answer is 180 ohm. That is if you connect 360 ohm with 180 ohm in parallel connection, you will get an equivalent resistance of 120 ohm. Next question is a differential amplifier has a differential gain AD of 100 and a common mode gain AC of 0 0.1. 
what is CMRS? So this is also very simple question. So uh, we know that the equation for finding your CMRR or common mode rejection ratio. So the differential amplifier will try to reject the common mode signals, right? So the common mode rejection ratio is given by AD, that is a differential gain, which is given as 100 by your common mode gain AC. So your CMRR is 100 by AC is 0 0.1, right? So it is 100 into 10, that is 1000. So this 1000 is your CMRR. Now see the options. It is given in dB, right? So in order to find the CMRR in dB, that is CMRR in dB is given by the equation 20 log 10 the CMRR which you have obtained now that is the AD by AC. So this AD by AC you have obtained here and in order to find the value in dB you have take you have to take the 20 logarithm. So it is 20 log 10 thousand that is 10 raised to 3 right. So if you take this logarithm that is 20 into 3 into log 10 that is 10 to the base 10. So this log 10 to the base 10 is 1 right into 1. So you will get it as, I will write it here, it is equal to 60 dB. So 60 dB is your answer. So for answering this question, first you have to find the CMRR value that is given by the equation common mode gain by, sorry, uh, the differential gain by common mode gain that is AD by AC. So in this question you are given the differential mode gain or the differential gain AD and also the common mode gain AC. So just you have to substitute and find the value of CMRR. Now you need to find the uh, dB terms that is the CMRR in dB. So you have to take the 20 logarithm and you if you take the 20 logarithm the answer obtaining is 60 dB. So the correct answer for this question is 60 dB. That is your option. What is the modulation index in a frequency modulated signal with the modulating frequency of 500 hertz and frequency deviation of 10 kilohertz? So this is also a basic question. So the equation for finding the modulating index or modulation index is m equal to the maximum frequency deviation by maximum modulating frequency. So both these terms are given in the equation or the question. So you have to just substitute the value in this equation and find the value of your modulate, modulation index. So the m equal to, so if you don't know about modulation index, just note this equation. So m equal to maximum frequency deviation by maximum modulating frequency. So m equal to the maximum uh, frequency deviation is how much? 10 kilohertz. That is 10 into 10 raised to 3 by 500, right? So 500 into 2 equal to 1000. So 2, that is you will get 20 as your modulating index. So the correct answer for this question is option B, which is 20. So the modulation index is 20. The next question is a Boolean simplification question. The logical expression a plus b into a plus c is what? So if you expand this Boolean expression, what will you get? If it is a plus b plus c or a plus b c or a b plus a c or a into b into c. So we have done a lot of Boolean simplification in our gate preparation videos. So if you want to do more Boolean simplification examples or questions, please do watch the videos of Boolean simplification. So if you simplify this, you have to expand this bracket that is a plus b into a plus c, right? So you have to expand this terms. a into a is a itself then plus a into c is a c. Now b into a is b a or a b plus b into c is b c. Now from these three terms you can take a is common a into 1 plus c plus b plus b c. Now 1 plus any term will give 
a value of 1. So a into 1 plus bc that is a plus bc is your answer for this question. So if you don't know about the Boolean simplification laws also, we have done a separate video on the Boolean simplification laws. Please do watch the video and share the link in my description box. Okay, the answer for this question is option B that is A plus B C is your answer. The next question which we are going to discuss is this. This is from a signal and system subject. A real signal is said to be even signal if. The options are option A G of T equal to 2 G of T. Option B, G of T equal to minus G of T. C, G of T equal to G of minus T. And D, G of T equal to G of T into G of T. Now, uh, if you are uh, looking at this signal, you can see that uh, G of T is your original signal. And if what operation is performed, we will get an even signal. Or we can say that the signal is even. That is a signal, G of T is even. So, the signal or any signal is said to be even if the signal is equal to that is original signal is equal to its time reversed counterparts. Now time reversed signal means we are going to reverse that time. So inside the angular bracket or inside the bracket there is a t that indicates that time. Time reversal means g of t equal to g of minus t. So if you make the t as minus t means then we are going to time reverse the signal then if g of t equal to the time reverse version that is g of minus t then we can say that this g of t is a even signal so that is a concept of even signals so when the signal is equal to the time reversed counterparts or time reversed version then the signal is said to be even now what are the other operations so for a first one we are just multiplying a 2 to the magnitude of the signal that is not an even signal. Now g of t into minus g of t means we are making the signal negative. g of t into is equal to g of t into g of t is we are taking the square of the signal. So that is not even. So for even signals this is the case that is g of t should be equal to the time reversed version that is the g of minus t. Only then the signal is said to be even. So for the uh, for this question the answer is option C that is g of t should be equal to g of minus t. Okay. So these are the questions which I have included in this video. We have discussed the previous year questions of 2017 technician exam conducted by ISRO. We are also doing videos for ISRO scientist electronics exam preparation and also gate exam preparations and RRB exam preparations. So if you are interested in watching any of this video, please do subscribe to the channel and also do share these videos with your friends who are preparing for these exams. And also if you are interested in watching digital signal processing or network analysis or basic electronic videos, we have also created playlists for mm, these topics. And I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. So we'll see in the part two of technician exam preparation videos. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also keep on watching. Thank you.